What's going on guys? This is Von Alec Puma, back with another Borderlands video, and today I wanted to go ahead and talk about Borderlands 2's overpower levels and whether they should return in Borderlands 3. But before we get into that, we should probably discuss what Borderlands 2's overpower levels are. Now, if you're newer to Borderlands 2, overpower levels are best described as additional leveling beyond the game's hard level cap at level 72. So if you'd like to go beyond the game's level cap, you can acquire new overpower levels or ranks, which will not only scale the health and difficulty of the enemies that you're fighting in Ultimate Vault Hunter mode, but also continue to increase the scaling of your gear as well. Unlike normal leveling, where you gain additional experience to then level up and become stronger, in order to acquire a new overpower level or rank, you have to complete the Digistruct Peak Challenge in Ultimate Vault Hunter Mode at the highest difficulty available. So for example, in order to obtain your first overpower level, you'll need to beat the Digistruct Peak Challenge at level 72 in Ultimate Vault Hunter Mode. To then go from, say, OP level 4 to OP level 5, you will need to complete the same challenge at OP 4 in Ultimate Vault Hunter mode. Overall, there are 8 overpower levels that range from 1 through 8, and are meant to represent what would normally be level 73 through 80 enemies in gear. So, if you manage to come across an OP 6 shotgun, it would be the equivalent of a level 78 weapon or if you are playing on OP8 difficulty, you're likely to come across level 80 enemies, complete with the amount of health and damage output that a level 80 enemy would possess. Of course, you may be wondering what's the point of overpower levels. Well, the purpose of overpower levels is to make the game more difficult, while also offering a lot more things to do once you've reached maximum level and entered Borderlands 2's endgame. As far as difficulty is concerned, overpower level enemies incur a certain amount of damage reduction because the player's level doesn't change in relation to the level of the enemies. Normally in other difficulties, an enemy that is two or more levels above you incurs a certain amount of damage reduction. Assuming you're level 72 and the enemy you encounter is level 74 or higher, they will achieve at least some damage reduction. On average, you can expect OP level mobs to possess anywhere from 10 to 65% damage reduction, provided that they range from level 74 to 82. This, of course, is on top of the abilities that most enemies in Ultimate Vault Hunter mode already possess, where they have quadrupled health and constant health regeneration. Otherwise, the other reason you would play in the OP levels is due to how the OP levels in general tend to have much higher drop rates, as well as for the ability to obtain gear with stats that are the equivalent of level 80 items. It's also worth mentioning that sort of like the various raid boss trials and competitions that are held amongst the Greater Borderlands community, competitions are held to see who can complete Digistruct Peak runs the fastest, or in the most flashy ways with or without certain restrictions. Overpower levels are also pretty popular as they can act as a form of adjustable difficulty as well. Granted, I suppose you have to complete the game under the hardest difficulty to really use the difficulty slider, but going back to standard level 72 UVHM with OP8 weapons makes the game feel more like Borderlands 2's true Vault Hunter mode difficulty, and may prove to be a lot more fun for some players. It's also great for helping with co-op, because unlike normal Ultimate Vault Hunter mode, where the level of the enemies scales to the highest level character, characters with OP8 weapons are capable of higher damage output without scaling enemies past level 72, making it perfect for helping people trying to level or do various other activities. After all, farming level 74 raid bosses with OPA gear is perfect for amassing a bunch of Seraph crystals to then use to purchase OP8 Seraph items. Ultimately, I would say that overpower levels are pretty great, and were also kind of ingenious, as all Gearbox really did was create a new set of difficulties based around Borderlands 2's very own damage reduction mechanics. By increasing the drop rates and allowing players to acquire higher level and more powerful gear as they attained each new overpower level, it gave players something to do once they had beaten everything else that Borderlands 2 had to offer. With this said, I do think there were definitely some reasons the entire overpower level system was kinda lame. 
One of those reasons is that mob enemies can have anywhere between 10 to 65% damage reduction depending on what their level is relative to yours. When this got combined with constant health regeneration and quadrupled enemy health, certain weapons were incapable of dealing enough damage to compensate for both the damage reduction and the enemy's health regen. It's important to mention that this wasn't just awful weapons like the Landscaper or Evil Smasher, and this is something like a purple rarity non-elemental Vladov rifle, which is something that would actually be fairly decent or even okay loot in most other difficulties. So, essentially, the OP levels made what was already a fairly small pool of viable weapons in Ultima Volta to mode even smaller for OP5 through OP8. I also think it's worth mentioning that in general, getting to OP8 in Borderlands 2 can prove to be a fairly tedious process. I'd say this mostly comes down to both the strength of some of the enemies, as well as the sheer length of a Digistruct Peak run. For example, a Digistruct Peak run can take you like 30 minutes, and if you're playing by yourself and you end up failing, you could lose well over 20 minutes of progress or more, which can definitely be pretty frustrating after a while. Sure, I suppose there are exploits that you can perform which make the process less tedious if you don't mind using them, but it may take you a while if you end up playing solo and you don't intend on using any exploits at all. There's also the fact that you may or may not need to refarm a lot of your weapons for each OP level. Given the steep damage reduction curve based on your level disparity with enemies, the best legendary gear will become useless after one or two OP levels, meaning that as soon as you complete one overpower level, you may have to do a bunch more farming to prepare for the next one. Granted, I suppose you could always use save editors, but that's not always going to be an option for some, and besides, it would be better if there was a system in the game that didn't require you to go back and constantly refarm weapons that you already farmed for. And with that in mind, some of these flaws could be fixed. As far as refarming is concerned, having some ability to immediately increase the level of a certain weapon to your level, sort of like how Destiny does with infusions, could prevent some of the tedium involved with refarming gear that you already have. In fact, I would be fine with farming a bunch of a particular currency, sort of like you do in Destiny, or by completing a specific repeatable but difficult side quest that levels up a weapon of your choice as a quest reward. That way, if you manage to get an awesome Norfleet at level 72, you can get it to scale with you as you progress in overpower levels. As far as some weapons being obsolete due to the sheer strength of the enemies and their damage reduction, that has more to do with Gearbox not balancing Borderlands 2 with difficulties like Ultimate Vault Hunter mode and the OP levels in mind. I suspect a scenario where this occurs is a lot less likely to happen as the pre-sequel was much better balanced compared to Borderlands 2. So it's safe to say that future games in the series probably won't suffer from some of the problems with weapon balance that Borderlands 2 had in the OP levels. In general, I think there's a lot to be said of the OP levels. They were both a worthy introduction to the game that expanded the end game, and they were also sort of flawed as well. Even still, I do have to say that I would like to see them return, and in my opinion, I think they definitely should return in Borderlands 3. However, I do think that overpower levels, along with Ultimate Vault Hunter mode, should be optional. What would be ideal would be if you could still play through, say, like True Vault Hunter mode, and it would scale all the way to level 72. That way, you're not immediately forced into Ultimate Vault Hunter mode like you were in Borderlands 2, where the ramp up in difficulty is considerable and pretty shocking. Also, making both Ultimate Vault Hunter mode and OP levels optional could allow Gearbox to more properly incentivize players to try these harder modes by featuring greatly increased drop rates in addition to access to much more powerful and high-end items. It would actually be pretty cool if Gearbox could implement overpower levels or some kind of equivalent as a sort of optional adjustable difficulty rather than a necessity like it is in Borderlands 2. However, for players that want to get really good at the game and try those higher level difficulties, you would be rewarded with easier access to higher quality legendaries and pearlescent gear.
even if overpower levels were implemented exactly the same way that they were in Borderlands 2, if they added methods to increase the level of your gear like Destiny does with infusions, it might be a lot more fun. I think another major reason overpower levels should return is due to the reception and lack of endgame in Borderlands the pre-sequel. Arguably, one of the pre-sequel's greatest flaws is that it stripped out a lot of the cool raid boss fights and Digistruct Peak-like challenges, which I would say really crippled the endgame and also alienated a portion of the community that was really interested in competing for who had the best time or who could basically complete this thing in like a really interesting way. The key thing here is that by having features like the overpower levels, there's a lot more to do once the main game ends. So overall, I think it's a good idea for OP levels to return, as I think a lot of the kinks or problems they introduced could easily be fixed. However, I think the real question is, will they return? If you look at Borderlands the pre-sequel, which is the most recent game in the series, overpower levels don't officially appear. True, you were able to unofficially obtain them through save editors, however, the lack of an official use of overpower levels in the pre-sequel could potentially mean that overpower levels as a whole have been phased out and won't return in any future games. This would be pretty unfortunate, as the overpower levels do extend the endgame, and part of the reason that the pre-sequel died was due to a lack of endgame. There's also the fact that Borderlands 3 and its mechanics could end up being quite different from what we've seen in Borderlands 2. For example, let's say enemies with a noticeably higher level than the player don't get damage reduction in Borderlands 3. Obviously, you couldn't have overpower levels return in the exact same way, so Gearbox would have to do something different. Maybe we'll end up with something that's the equivalent of, or even superior to overpower levels, but we're just not going to know that until Borderlands 3. Before we go, if someone from Gearbox comes across this video, I just hope that we end up seeing overpower levels or something similar in Borderlands 3. While overpower levels were sort of flawed, I also think that a lot of the flaws could potentially be fixed in Borderlands 3. Not to mention that overpower levels would allow for more content in Borderlands 3's endgame, which is always a plus. At the same time, I'd be game for something that's better, or even a total improvement on overpower levels as well. Especially if that's something that gives the player more options and choices of how they want to play. Otherwise guys, I think that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you liked this video, feel free to leave a like. Click the bell so you can be notified when I upload more videos. And as always, thank you all so much for supporting the channel. Take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.